In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. <coughs> Today, the Gospel is about the birth <coughs> of John the Baptist. And John the Baptist is the one the Lord said about him, he is the greatest ever man born of a woman. And you can, can you see? Greatest ever man being born of a woman. And we wonder actually why why he was the greatest ever man being born of a woman <coughs> John the Baptist was the preceder of our Lord Jesus Christ he came before him to prepare the way for the Lord. And the Lord even kept his birth till it was the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. I mean for Zachariah and Elizabeth he delayed the Elizabeth's pregnancy till she was nearly in her 80s. When she was never imagined that she can bear a child. But the Lord has kept them and has kept his birth miraculously to keep him the one to, pre to precede him, to prepare the way for him. And why is that? Because it is written that he came in the spirit of Elijah. He was a fiery man. His greatness is in his message. His greatness in his relationship to the Lord and the relationship of his message to the Lord. And what was his message? His message was just a few words. Repent. Repent. He came to the whole of Israel saying, Repent, repent, repent. And made all the Israelites to come to get baptized by him for repentance. <coughs> Can you imagine? the preparation of the whole people to receive Christ was what? Was repentance. And that is why repentance is essential in our lives, in our Christianity, essential for our eternity, because no one can go to heaven without repentance. No one. When even the Lord came and said, Repent for the heavenly kingdom is at hand, St. Peter asked him, Do you say that to us or to people? And the Lord said, Unless you repent you will perish. It makes no difference between an apostle 
or a normal person, unless you repent, you will perish. And repentance in, in the church life is essential for even approaching any of its sacraments. You can't, you can't have the Holy Communion without repenting and confessing. You can't be anointed with the anointment of the sick without repenting and confessing. You can't get married without repenting and confessing. Repentance and confession is always essential for having any sacrament. Although that we might neglect repentance in many occasions, we might rely on coming to the church. We might rely on our knowledge and the Bible. We might rely on that we are teachers in Sunday school or deacons or even priests or any degree in the priesthood. But without repentance, we will not be saved. We will not be saved. Unless you repent, you will all perish. To the extent that even the prayer before sleep in the prayer book, we all stand before the Lord to pray and say, I'm going to stand before the throne of glory. As if you are reminding yourself that you might go to sleep and would not wake up in the morning. And so many people had the same. So we need to repent wholeheartedly. We need today the crying voice in the wilderness of John the Baptist to cry into our hearts to receive our Lord Jesus Christ, not in the manger, but in our hearts, in our homes, in our lives and to repent you need always to examine yourself every day don't let one day to pass by without sitting with yourself and the God and remember what you have done wrong in that day what you have than right in this day. <coughs> For what you have done wrong, you have to say sorry to the Lord and see where what the problem, where did you go wrong and repent and promise the Lord that would not happen again and to ask him for the strength and for the power to help you to overcome the temptations around you and to overcome all the Satan's tricks around you 
I wanted to tell every one of us, don't go to sleep unless you repent. Don't close your eyes at night unless you repent. And repentance means to change your ways, to go back to your fatherly embrace, to your fatherly home, and to have peace in between his arms. Otherwise, you might enjoy the whole world and the pleasures of the world, but what, what will happen when you stand before the Lord in the last day? What would you say to him? I wanted to tell you repentance and confession, especially confessions, we call it mock, mock day of judgment. Because in confession, you confirm your repentance. Confession is always the, re the fruit of repentance not the repentance itself, but the fruit of repentance. Not because you confess, it means you repented. So many people confess and repeat, confess and repeat, confess and repeat, to the extent that some people come to say, as usual, Abuna, as usual what? As usual, yani, lying, swearing, doing this, doing that, as usual. That is not repentance. Repentance means to regret your sins and to promise the Lord not to repeat it and to change your ways, to change your ways and your th way of thinking and the way you live so that we will be ready for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in his second coming. Many neglect confessions, many neglect daily repentance, but we need at the end of this year to really prepare ourselves by making real repentance and making resolutions for the new year to be different, to receive Christ and live in Him and let Him stay and appear in your body, in your life, in your home and everywhere you go, even at your work, to everyone. May the Lord give us all this great repentance and glory to God forever. Amen.